So today I wanted to share a story with you guys from a recent rolling session that I had earlier this week. And at the end of the video, I'll give you guys an update on how my weight loss thing's going. You might notice I'm slimming down a little bit in the face, but I'll give you some details on uh, what I'm up to with it. And I'll let you know why I haven't been as up to date with you more often on Fridays. But um, getting into the story, this past Monday I came into the gym and I had had a really tough leg workout on Sunday, really tough one. And I had come into, or I came into the gym Monday thinking to myself, you know what, I'm gonna take it easy this morning. I'm gonna teach class, I'm not gonna roll, I'm just gonna relax a little bit and I'll train hard tonight, like later in the evening classes. I walk into the gym, I've got multiple tough black belts, I've got a bunch of scrappy uh, other, you know, uh, grapplers on there, like browns, purples, blues, whites, everything else. And then there was this other guy that was there that was new. I hadn't met him yet. And I looked at him. He looked familiar. And then my one of my students who was stationed at Fort Knox, he's in the army. He said, oh yeah, this is my army buddy. And he told me he was going to bring in his army buddy. He asked if it was okay. And I was like, yeah, sure, bring him in. And I asked him, hey, has your friend trained at all? And he said, well, yeah, he's done a little wrestling. <laughs> and uh, his friend turns out he was a college wrestler. He's also a CrossFit Games athlete. So I mean, the dude's freakishly strong and athletic. Um, I'll put his uh, his Instagram page down below if you want to check him out. He's like the other day he was doing like overhead presses with almost like 400 pounds or something. Freakishly strong and athletic. And uh, he's also done jujitsu for a number of years. And I instantly recognized him once he said that because I remember seeing a video or a picture of him rolling at a friend of mine's gym over on the other end of town. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know who this guy is. And so for me, I instantly knew at that point, between all the black belts and all the scrappy other people that I have in the gym, and I got this new guy who's a really athletic wrestler, uh, tough grappler, I'm like, well, <laughs> the, uh, the easy morning that I had expected, that's out the window. Now we're getting ready to, we're gonna have a fun day today. And we did. I rolled with all the different guys, and I especially wanted to roll with um, the, the guy, the, the army, uh, the friend of the army guy, right? Because I wanted to roll with him because I love rolling with different people of different styles. You know, a tough wrestler who's super athletic, everything else. That's just a different style that you can't you can't really mimic a, a college wrestler very often, right? Or a, a CrossFit Games athlete who's in really good shape. It's it's hard to thing to mimic, right? And so I started rolling with him, and instantly I'm going in for my half guard. I was gonna get under his hip and I was gonna sweep him, only it didn't work. Right? I kept coming up, he'd get out of it, use his wrestling to get away from me, and then he's super athletic and he was bouncing all over the place. I he he shut my uh, he shut my half guard down. And so I was forced to use butterfly. I went to butterfly and had a little bit of success with it, and then was switching into some X guard and had some success with it. You know, but again, it was, it was a fun role with the guy. And uh, the reason I bring this up is because I remember the way that I used to deal with these situations. And I know that a lot of you guys are, you're, you're coming up in jiu-jitsu now, and so this might be useful to you. But I remember back in the day, obviously, everybody from the very moment I started jiu-jitsu would say, you know, technique is king, technique is all that matters, whatever. But if you're, I mean, we all know that strength, uh, explosiveness, athleticism, all this stuff comes into play, and especially if the guy has a good wrestling base and a little bit of grappling to him, that's a tough combination to deal with. And then a lot of times you'll see people where, you know, they'll go against someone of that type and they'll throw their hands up in the air and say, well, you know, he's just using strength. He's not using technique, right? Or she's just doing this. She's not playing the game right, whatever. And you know, I think as, as jiu-jitsu practitioners, you have to get rid of that mindset because when you get in these situations where you're ro rolling in and you try to use maybe one of your better positions and it doesn't work, you can't just keep doing the same thing. You, you, a lot of times you have to adjust. I know that like when I was younger, one of the things I would do is if I went against someone that was a really tough wrestler or someone that was just physically strong, I remember there was a guy named Gus who came into the gym who was a, um, I think he was a fullback for like a D1 college. The dude was, I mean, he was, the, he was literally one of the strongest humans I've ever grappled with. And he wasn't like a hardcore grappler. He was a football player and he was just strong and athletic. And I couldn't move the dude. And I remember being so frustrated by it. And instead of having that like problem solving mindset, okay, how am I going to figure this big fella out? I would just keep trying to do the same thing and bang my head against the wall and you know sometimes things would work out after I exhausted myself to do stuff but a lot of times I would just get caught in a stalemate and then it was stuck and then I either had to say well I messed up or eh, they're just not doing it right they're, they're not using enough technique where I'm at now and where you should be when you roll against someone that has a style that's maybe difficult for you to deal with is you've got to have that problem-solving mindset because you got to think of your game almost like a toolbox right if you have a nail, you're not gonna take a screwdriver out and try to screw in a nail. It's just not the tool for the job. You're gonna take out a hammer, right? And sometimes a lot of, in jiu-jitsu, you're gonna be in situations where maybe the position that you're using is not the right tool for the job. It's maybe the position or the technique that you're using is not the right tool for the job. And another thing to consider is that 
one is a bad number for jiu-jitsu. One position, one technique, one sweep, one submission, one anything. Because if you've only got one of something and you don't have like a, a sequence or an, 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 an option that you can go to, then you're stuck. And so uh, again, make sure that as you guys are training, you always have options, you always have things to connect to, and you want your game to always kind of have the cyclical style. And this is one of the reasons where, or why I like the butterfly guard so much, because I can use butterfly guard. If it doesn't work, I can shoot into half guard. If that doesn't work, and I can always go to X guard. I can transition to a lot of different positions because the, the, the butterfly almost acts like a crossroads to almost every guard position if you want to get to it. And so just a sort of an idea for you guys to, to think about, to chew on, Make sure that when you go against people that have difficult styles, that have frustrating elements to them, don't be the, the weak jiu-jitsu practitioner who says, oh, you're just strong, right? Be the strong one that says, let me figure this out. I'm gonna have to maybe dig up some different tools in my game that I don't have right now, and I've gotta d develop some different weapons to use. And uh, so that's that. So the, the other part of this video that I wanted to catch up with you guys is my weight loss stuff. So. Um, currently, I'm down to about 202. We did 202 this morning, so I'm down about 10 pounds from when I started. I was like 211, 212. So I'm down about 10 pounds. The weight's coming off very smoothly. Um, I've actually been eating a lot of food right now. I'm eating about six meals a day. Um, they're fairly small meals, but I'm getting exactly what I need. But six small meals a day, and then I'm lifting weights about five days a week, doing jiu-jitsu about five days a week. You know, the intensity varies, of course, and the weight's it's falling right off, and uh, in a good way. You know, I'm starting to see little abdominal muscles come out, but at the same time, my strength in, in the gym and even on the mats is staying up pretty high. And so, um, I'll do some more videos coming up soon to sort of sort of tell you what my diet's been looking like and what my workout program's been looking like and some, hip, some tips to help you guys out. And uh, the reason why we stopped doing those videos was because Joe was getting busy, I was getting busy, and Joe actually decided to go up a weight class for his weightlifting, so you know, instead of coming down, in weight like, I, like I'm doing. He wanted to go up for this weight class. Now, he's since said that after this competition's over, he's gonna come back down, because he says he doesn't like the feel. I think he's like 240 right now. He says, like, I don't like being this big. He said, I just wanted to do it for this one competition and see how I would do, but I wanna kinda come back down. And so he's gonna do that afterwards. But for me, I'm down to 202. Oh, by the way, um, this video is all over the place, isn't it? In, um, in November. It just so happened that the Nogi Pans is happening now in Atlanta, and so I decided to sign up, and so I'm signed up for the, uh, the Nogi Pans, and I'll be at the the lower weight class. I'm usually at 215 and under. I'm gonna be at 202 and under because I was like, well, I'm already leaning out, might as well, right? And so if you guys see me at the Nogi Pans, you're welcome to say, hey, now if I've got my headphones in and I'm like, in, the, you can see that I'm getting ready for something, just I wouldn't talk to me then because I'm getting ready for a match. But if you see me with my headphones off and I'm just kind of walking around, feel free to say, hey, keep in mind though, that I have kind of resting bitch face. So if you see me, and I'm just kind of walking around like this, like this is my, I don't know why, this is my default face, because I'm always thinking about stuff. I remember my girlfriend, I, I asked her one time, I said, hey, what do you think people think about me when they meet me? And she said, well, they probably think you're mean and angry. And I said, why? She's like, because you always look like this. Your thinking face is always going. And so I'm always kind of thinking, and so that's what's going on there. So if you see me with a, a sort of a mean scowl as I'm walking around, I'm probably not angry, I'm probably just uh, you know thinking about something. So if you wanna say hey to me while I'm at the Nogi Pans, say hey to me as long as I don't have my headphones in, we're good. And uh, But yeah, that's the video, guys. Hopefully you guys, are, that tip is useful to you about changing your game up when you need to. And um, I'll get to you with more details on all the weight loss stuff I've been doing, and hopefully I'll see some of you guys at Nogi Pants. All right, I'll talk to you next time.